Good morning, everybody. All right, man, everybody like the cool morning this morning? Yeah, man, I tell you what, it, it, it's not, it's not going to be much longer, and uh, these mornings are going to start uh, getting hot, okay? And that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing, not when you like the cool weather. Good to see all of y'all. You guys jumping in online? You got to love it, man. You just got to love it. You got to love it. It is good to see y'all. You guys jumping in online. Thank you all for tuning in. You guys on the radio. Uh, man, we appreciate you. Uh, man, appreciate you tuning in with us today. Got a, got a great service for you today. But before we get to rolling, all right, before we get everything rolling, Miss, Miss Ella, come up here, please, with me, sweetie. Come up here, Ella. Come up here, girl. Uh, we, have not, uh, we have not seen this young lady here in, uh, in over a year. And, uh, yeah, buddy, you guys, you guys know her story, uh, everything that, uh, they have been through the, the last year, uh, with, with her, with her transplant, transfusion, however we, how, however it is, is worded, uh, and, and this is her, really her first big, major public outing, gathering, uh, and she's here with us today. Mom and dad are here with us today. Baby brother is here with us today. And I'm telling you, we are happy. We are happy to have this young lady. I am happy to have this young lady here with us today. She may come up here and preach with me. I don't know. Uh, we're not going to let Bill come up here and preach, but uh, Ella might. Okay, but uh, you know, you guys, uh, and I don't know how close we can get to her. I, I'm getting close to her. You know, she, she's good. She is good, 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 good. Just praise, we praise God for what he's done in her life uh, and, and for, uh, man, the story that he's going to continue to build with this young lady because I guarantee you guys it's going to be something amazing. All right, Miss Ella, it's good to see you. We're going to get to take our Easter picture together this year and not have to do it on FaceTime. That's a good deal, isn't it? Uh-huh, yeah, 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 all right. Hey, let me pray for us, and uh, then we're going to get going here, okay? Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, uh, man, to be able to gather up on a beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, Father, I thank you for the testimony that you've given this young lady, Lord, the testimony that you have given her family. Father, I thank you for, uh, man, I thank you for the miracle that you have done in her life. Uh, God, I thank you for the story that, uh, man, that you're going to give her. Lord, I thank you for allowing her to be here with us today. Uh, Father, we just, uh, God, we, we ask that everything that takes place here today, Jesus, that it honors you, that it glorifies you. And Father, I pray very specifically right now, if there's someone here, if there's someone watching, if there's someone that's listening, Father, if, if they don't know you, if they don't have that relationship with you, God, I just, man, whether it's, through, whether it's through the songs, Lord, whether it's through the reading of your word, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will just touch their lives. And, and, Father, that they would leave here changed, that they would leave here knowing you. Jesus, we love you, we praise you, and we ask all this in your name. Amen.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I had an eventful morning, okay? So, I got to tell you guys this. All right, so this, uh, I've been uh, house-sitting for Justin and Jenny McKee, and I was doing chores for them, and they, in the process of them moving, they had uh, uh, one of their cows reject one of their calves. Well, last night, took the bottle like champ after I chased it around the pen for a good little while. But anyways, this morning I go out there, I noticed that the cow's bag was uh, not as full, so I was like, okay, maybe he ate some, okay? I go in there, and the mama cow wanted nothing to do with me last night, but this morning she chased me around that pen all morning long, <laughs> protecting her baby calf like she took it back. So we had, I didn't have to bottle feed it this morning. But anyways, that started off my day, so I'm going to give you guys announcements. So there's a finance team meeting next Sunday right after church. There will be no Wednesday night activities this week due to spring break. So enjoy the your guys' spring break. Thursday night, team roping practice is back. It's uh, beginning this Thursday. It will be at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And it's $15 per roper. Uh, don't forget, uh, next Saturday night is the spring forward so that's the ch time change uh for we need some easter egg candy needed here at the church we have plenty of plastic eggs and i mean plenty of plastic eggs so we don't need any plastic eggs we just are needing some help with the candy um family play day series continues saturday March 20th, the sign-up starts at 10.30 a.m. Uh, poles, barrels, optical courses, age groups are lead line, 10 and under, 11 through 17, and 18 and up. And one more thing, uh, preteen camp, July 24th and 28th. Uh, then the teen camp is June 14th and 18th. Both groups will be going to Camp Well in Oklahoma this year, and the sign-up sheets are on the back tables, and there will be a required of a $100 non-refundable deposit to hold each spot. So with that, that concludes all my announcements, but I do want to say we have a pretty good artist here in the Double N Cowboy Church. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's like a medical bag and a little dummy here. And then it says a nice note on here. It says, I see you. Um, here, don't worry, I'm not bad. I just wanted to prank you, dude. Ha, 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 ha. So, nice drawing, Camden. <laughs> All right, with that, I'm going to dismiss kiddos, and then we'll pray and get back to worship. So, kiddos, head off to kids' church. Women's group will meet tomorrow night at 6.30. Okay, all right. Sorry, women, you don't have a spring break. Yeah, okay. All right, with that, let's pray, guys. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for allowing each and every one of us to come in here together, Lord, and, and worship in the fellowship, Lord. I just praise you for the beautiful weather that you've been presenting us and allowing us to have such a good turnout last night at the Ranch Rodeo. Lord, I just thank you for the blessings in which you have in store for us, Lord. And I just ask that in this message that it's your words and not Pastor Jenny's words. It's in your son's name. Amen. i 
risen, shaken Savior, if you got chains, He's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves more now.
y'all pray with me Lord help us to count the joy in every battle I pray that every one of us in here today would have open hearts to receive a message from you I pray that everything that happens here today is directly from you and I pray that we don't take any of this for granted it's in your son's precious name I pray amen goodness man I tell you what uh, it is uh, it is so great to be here today uh, man I got to brag on uh, everybody that uh, man helped out put on uh, with everything that took place last night with the ranch rodeo you guys did a fantastic job uh, man it was uh, yeah it was good 
I don't know if you didn't make it out here, uh, man. I tell you what, you missed a you missed a good performance there. I promise you. Uh, had some man had some good competition going on out there. There was some good food. Uh, there's even some crawfish left out there. I think, man. If uh, uh, if I don't know what y'all, but anyways, I'll let y'all handle that later. Okay, uh, man. Uh, I, I I'm just I'm, I'm I gotta lay my cards out on the table here with you. Okay, uh, and and this because this is one of those mornings that's really weird for me. All right, uh, it's just just really kind of strange for me. Uh, you know, after when when I got home last night, uh, man, I, I I skinned out a little bit early and uh, to to go home and do some other things. I hadn't seen Tracy all day and. And uh, I wanted to see her. I'm kind of selfish that way. I know that, but I ain't gonna make no apologies for it. Um, and so got home and 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 all that. And and it was I don't know. It was midnight, probably when we got to bed and and, and shut everything off and and all that good stuff. And and uh, man, go to sleep. And and here it is at 3:34 this morning. My eyes just boom wide awake. Time to get up. Okay. Now, you know, used to, that used to really aggravate the thunder out of me anytime something like that would happen. Uh, but every time, and, and, and I, you know, I, I need to preach a sermon series on this sometime, uh, going back several, several years ago, of, of when I wake up, it, it, it's, it's like it's always 3.34 in the morning, for whatever reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. But that's the time that when, when God is really pushing on me, mashing on me, uh, has something that he wants to tell me, show me, or have me do, it's like that's the time that he wakes me up. And, and there's, no, there's no sense sitting there trying to fight it and go back to sleep. It's, it's let's get up and let's go, let's go see what we're doing here. You know, and sometimes it may last an hour. Uh, sometimes it may last two hours. And, and this morning, you know, it, it, at, at, uh, man, it was 4.30, and it was like, okay, all right, you know, this is good here. And so then at 5 o'clock, I was like, man, hey, I'm just going to shower and get dressed and go on out to the church. Um, so anyways, with that, with that, here's where my heart's at with this this morning. Because the message, what we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at two sons, okay? This is going to be a very evangelistic message, all right? And, and the thing that God began to, you know, and, and guys understand, I'm not saying God spoke to me in an audible voice, but what I'm telling you is what he, what he began to impress upon my heart is the fact that I know that there is somebody, there's somebody here, there's somebody watching this online that, 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 that I want you to understand, I don't know who you, I don't know who, I don't know who this is for, but what I do know is, is that you're in the right place today and you need to hear this, okay? And, and, and so guys, what I, you know, you, you, you guys, and, and now here's the, here's the other side of this. Here's the other side of this. Here, here, here's what this also tells me and shows me is the battle that is taking place right now, okay? Uh, because I guarantee you there's, there's a couple of you in here right now that you're thinking, okay, hey, we're just going to hear another message. And, and what I want you to understand with that is, guys, that is a lie from the depths of hell, okay? Uh, because what's taking place right there is Satan's trying to distract you, okay? Because he, he, wants, he wants to get in your ear and he wants you to sit there and he wants you to think, he wants to tell you, man, hey, everything's okay. Everything's okay. You ain't got nothing to worry about. When the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, guys, what we need to understand is, is, is that God has something so much bigger and, and so, so much better for you, okay? And, and, and so with that, what I want you to understand, this is a message about salvation. This is a message about, you know, not, not what it takes to be saved. Okay, that's not what it's about. It's a simple fact. It's the simple fact that it is a message about God wants to save you. Okay, in spite of yourself. All right, God wants to save you. We're going to look at these two sons, and, and, and you know this. Most of you, you'll know this story within, within Luke's gospel, uh, in the way he recorded it. Uh, you're going to know it as the man, as the prodigal son. You're going to know it as, uh, you know, as the parable of the lost son. Uh, you, you, I mean, most of you, you've got the gist of, of, of where we're going to be going with this. But, guys, I mean, my prayer as we go through this is, is that for, for each and every one of us, that this is new that it's not only new, but that it's also a fresh outlook and it's a fresh approach 
to how we look at what happens in this parable that Jesus shares. Okay, you know, t- uh, today we're gonna we're we're we're, we're gonna look at the younger son. Okay, uh, we're gonna look at him and we're gonna look at his life and we're gonna see what he did. But we're also gonna look at how his father responded to him. Next week, next Sunday, we're gonna look at the other son. We're gonna look at the older brother. Okay, uh, we're gonna look and we're gonna see, uh, guys. We're gonna see. Uh, we're going to see both examples here, if you would, of one who doesn't deserve grace, but yet it is extended to him, and he receives it, okay? We're going to see how he responds to that. Next week, we're going to see how the other brother responds to the grace that was extended to his younger brother. It, 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 it's, it's really fascinating, but in your Bibles, let's jump in here. In your Bibles, Luke 15, beginning in verse 11, is where we're going to start. If you don't have your Bibles, it's going to be up on the screen. For you guys at home, it's going to be coming across your man, your, 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 your smart device, whatever you're watching on. But it's Luke 15, beginning in verse 11. Check this out. It says, to illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die so his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons a few days later this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land and there he wasted all his money in wild living about the time his money ran out a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. And I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. Will y'all pray with me? Father, once again, we just, Lord, we we just want to stop right here. And God, we want to thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to, Lord, to gather up this morning. Father, to praise you for the opportunity to have a time of worship. And God, to praise you for the opportunity to open up your word and read it this morning. Jesus, I'm, man, I, I pray very selfishly, but I also pray very, 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 very specifically and intently here right now. God, each and every one of us, we need to hear the message that this scripture has for each and every one of us. But Father, I know there's, there's, there, there, there's, there, there, there's some, God, they need to hear the grace that's being extended through this. And so, Father, I, man, I pray, God, that, that Jesus, that I can hide behind your cross and that the words that are spoken... Father, that they're not my words, but, Lord, that they are your words. God, that it's not my message, that it's not my ideas, uh, but, but, Father, that it's your message, that everything comes from you. Lord, I pray that our hearts are open. Lord, I pray that our, that our ears are open to hear what you have for each and every one of us this morning. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. Guys, as we look at this, you know, as, 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 we, as we focus here on this younger son, it's really easy not to like this guy, isn't it? Come on, it's really easy not to like him, all right? You know, he's the younger one. He's the baby of the family, all right? Uh, and, and right off the bat, we see that as the baby of the family, he's pretty spoiled, okay? Now, not all babies of the family are spoiled, okay? They're not. I, I be one. You know, I was spoiled, but that's another story, okay? I wasn't spoiled like this. We see that he's selfish, He's got a very selfish attitude about himself, doesn't he? You know, kind of a very brazen, very, you know, almost bizarre, almost, you know, cocky, arrogant, if you would. You know, uh, as far as his approach to things, you know, and, and we can come up with all kinds of descriptions of, uh, of him. You know, and, and, and man, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you, man, I could pick on this guy all day long. I could pick on him and not feel bad about it all day long because he makes it very easy for us to not like him all right and and don't sit there and kid yourself or don't try to lie to your neighbor or lie to me and tell me that you know that man hey there's some people that are that 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 are that are that are not hard to like there's some people that are hard to like okay i get it this guy makes it easy he makes it easy not to like him you know when we go back and we read that initial statement that he makes to his father uh, you know, he says, you know, the word says the younger son told his father, okay? Uh, did, did everybody catch that? He told him. Any of you ever tell your daddy anything? 
you know, you might have told him what you did wrong, all right, but you're not going to tell him. I, 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 I could not go to my father and, and tell him, hey, you're going to do this, okay, because he would have showed me what he was going to do, what he did. You, you understand what I'm saying? But when he goes and he tells his father, he tells his father, I won't, okay? Now, we all know the saying, don't we? Okay, you know, you, you can, this hand over here, and then you can do this and this hand over here. Which one going to fill up faster? We all know which one, don't we? All right, if you don't know what I'm talking about, come get me later, and I'll explain it to you in private, okay? Uh, you, I won't. You know, he says, Dad, I won't. All right, I want my share of your state now before you die. All right, I'm gonna t I, cannot, I could not imagine going to my father before he passed and telling him, Daddy, I want my share of your stuff right now before you die. I could not imagine doing that. But, you know, as Jesus shares this parable, man, you know, we see, we see this arrogance come out of this younger brother, okay? You know, uh, the, 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 way, the way he, he, he goes, and it, he's not asking for a blessing. He's demanding that his dad give him something that is not right, wasn't his. It was, you know, for my father, it wasn't mine. It wasn't mine to ask for, you know. I mean, and, 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 boy, it just, it's, it's aggravating, isn't it? You know, verse 13, what, what, what really further amplifies the situation, verse 13 tells us, you know, in just a few days, a few days he packs his stuff up and he takes his ball and he goes somewhere else. He goes off, he moved to a distant land, and then what did he do? He wasted everything he had just been given. All right, now here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing where this will get really, really personal. And, and, you know, I want you to be honest with yourself right now. You know, growing up, growing up, we, you know, we all had to grow up. We all had to go through them teenage years. You know, guys, girls, I, I, I don't care. You know, most of us, I'm not going to say all of us, but the majority of us when we were 16, 17 years old, we were turds, weren't we? All right? It's okay. It's okay. We were. I, I, okay, maybe you were. I was. All right? I'll put it like that. All right? You know, did you ever make that statement back then? Boy, when I get out of high school, I'm leaving this place and I ain't ever coming back. Did you ever do that? Some of you did. Some of you left and you never went back. You know, I, I, I'm sure I said that at one point. You know, from, from 1990, I think I, I lived one summer back home after I, after I graduated high school, you know. Then God called me to do this and now it's been, I can't go back down there, okay. But, you know, we, we, we do that and we think, man, hey, when I graduate high school, I'm going to be grown. I can do whatever I want. Man, I can be my own boss. I can make my own decisions. I can have all this freedom and do all this other stuff and do exactly what I want, when I want, how I want, talk like I want, sleep like I want, eat like I want to, and all this sort of stuff because mom and dad are just have absolutely lost their minds. Well, guys, we see the result of that here. We see the result of that cockiness. We see the result of that ignorance, if you would. You know, man, you know, it, it, ah, you knew it all, didn't you, at that age? Come on. You knew it all. You knew, you knew how to solve the world's problems. You know, we had it all figured out. We couldn't wait to be on our own. You know, for guys, and, and this is where that double standard comes in there. You know, for, for, for teenage boys, for college-age boys, you know, where it comes in, and, and, you know, we excuse that lifestyle for a lot of teenage boys. Okay, we do. You know, for, for 19, 20, 21 year old boys, we excuse their behavior. We excuse, it, it, it's like it's acceptable to, to excuse how they're living. You know, we say, well, they're going, they're sowing their wild oats. All right, you ever heard that? You know, you know, some of you, you sowed a lot of oats, didn't you? Okay, you know, be honest with yourself. You know, and, and, and guys, here's the thing this younger son, you know, this younger son, guys, he goes out and he wastes everything that his father had worked for to leave him to give him okay you know now maybe maybe you didn't live your life like that and 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 man if you didn't i applaud you i applaud you but you know uh, there's a whole bunch of us that lived our life lived our life like that and the sad part about it is i know this there's some of you you're still living your life like that <clears throat> that hurts doesn't it but you see guys it's the truth it's the truth you know, as this guy, as, as, as it talks about and it tells, begins to tell us what he was doing, there's a phrase in there, wild living, okay? Wild living. We're going to learn later. We'll learn next week what, exactly, very specifically, what that wild living meant, okay? What was this guy out there doing? Man, he was sowing his wild oats, all right? 
all right he was going out there he was doing that it says he was frequenting prostitutes you know that's that's where he was blowing all his money and wasting all his money you know guys for us you know our, our younger our younger years gets excused by some of that stuff you know we excuse it for man hey it's just a phase going through the drinking you know hey the drugs are just a phase uh you know the whoring around and all this stuff you know it, it, man it just it, it's just a phase they just got to go through it so they can grow up and and and, and be mature I and mean, folks i want to tell you no you don't your kid does not have to go through that you do not have to go through that you don't have to live your life that way right now we have the uh, we have the power within us through a relationship with jesus christ that we can say no more to this stuff that's going on out there but you see you know for for this guy to do that man he had to go out there and and and, and sell everything that his dad gave him convert it over to money so he could go out there and blow it on all this stuff of the world that was going to be no benefit to him you see what his father worked his entire life for in a matter of just weeks in a matter of just days or maybe it was a matter of a month or so this son wasted it all he was living a life without a care in the world all right now you, some of you you know exactly what i'm talking about because you've been there you've been there you've done it you've experienced you know and and things may seem great for a while but just like what we preached about just like what we talked about last night uh, last week what's going to happen guys when you're living that life whether you're living that life or whether you're living a good life something's going to happen and that's something that's going to happen is a storm's going to come what are you going to do when that storm comes okay now you see eventually the money runs out for this guy eventually everything gets everything is gone he's got nothing uh the scripture tells us we where we read it there that this great famine comes and it sweeps across the entire land okay and it gets so bad that that this that he, he he doesn't have anything he doesn't have any money for food uh he has to go out and get a job you know if if, if you've been to college some of you college students right now that are, that, that are that are trying to make it through it i'm gonna tell you right now there was many many nights many many nights that 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 my diet consisted of ramen noodles them suckers were like 10 cents a pack at walmart okay man you 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 they're not very good you can live on them okay you can survive on them they're not very good people make fun of me for liking spam and all that sort of stuff i'm gonna tell you man i saved the spam and the vein of sausage for special occasions okay because that was some delicacies okay you know the the, the ramen noodles were cheap they were cheap all right you know guys we understand some of those things part of the irony here in the fact for this young son you know it's a simple fact that as a jewish boy okay as a jewish man guys they didn't mess with pork okay that was against the law for them so what does he find himself doing now when he's when he's beginning to hit rock bottom all right he's out there slopping the hogs okay he's out there having to feed the pigs he you know that that the, these animals that to the jewish people were unclean now he's the one having to go out here and, and check this out work for a gentile okay and take care of the man's pigs it was so bad for him and he became so hungry nobody would give him anything that the stuff that they were feeding the pigs the pods if you would these beans that they were feeding the pigs looked appetizing to him i've been pretty hungry in my life okay there's been times i've been pretty hungry okay those ramen noodle nights i'm telling you there was times i was pretty hungry but here's the thing i'm gonna tell you this we had pigs growing up that we fed we had some feed we fed them but then we also fed them slop okay i don't know if people feed hogs slop anymore you know i know they don't do it for show pigs but i'm you know i, I don't know but i'm gonna tell you not one time in my life when i was a child was i ever tempted to get down there at that trough when i put the slop in there not one single time Uh, -uh. it makes me sick about thinking about it okay couldn't do it but folks that looked good to this guy that looked good good to him all right it took him reaching i know i'm going fast so bear with me it took him reaching that point in his life because folks for him at that moment he he was on rock bottom you, you understand what i'm saying he he could not get any lower in life than where he was right there you see guys some of you some of you now hear hear this hear this some of you the things that you're going through personally in your life right now you know you, you you've hit that rock bottom and some of you have bounced you've hit it and you've bounced up and said oh man i'm over it and then all of a sudden boom here it comes again and you hit it again you hit it again all right guys let me tell you this let me tell you this right now if you're at rock bottom hear me when i say this if you're at rock bottom there's only one place to go you understand and that one place to go is up if you will get your focus where your focus needs to be check this out 
check this out. Let's look at his father's response to this in going on in Luke 15, uh, verse 20, read verse 20 through 24. You know, and he devised this plan. Hey, I'm going to go, I, man, my, my, my dad's slaves, his servants, they're treated better than this. I'm going to go be one of his servants and beg for his forgiveness. So check this out. Check this out in verse 20, Luke 15, verse 20. It says, so he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, and he had prepared this, he had memorized this, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. You ever, you ever do something wrong when you were a teenager and on the way home you're, re you're rehearsing your story? You know, to where when you walk in the door, they don't even have to ask. It's like, Dad, I da 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 Do you ever do that? You know, uh, huh? yeah, yeah, we've all done it. Okay, man, Dad comes out, he grabs him, and man, boom. Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. He's got this all prepared. He gets it out there. But notice what his father says. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and, and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Parents, I can tell you right now that as a parent, we understand that love for that child. We understand the love and we understand what it means that, man, no matter what they do, we're going to love them. We understand and we know what it means that, you know, no matter how many times they mess up, I'm going to be sitting there at that window every single night. I'm going to be looking out that door waiting for them to get home so that I know that they're home safely, but also so I can go out there and I can wrap them up, I can hug them, I can give them a kiss, whatever it may be, so that they know that no matter what, no matter what, there is someone that loves them. Guys, when we focus on verse 20, when we focus on verse 20 that we just read there, you need to have this highlighted in your Bible. You need to have this underlined. You, we need to have this memorized where it says, so he returned to his father, and while he was still a ways off. Folks, as bad as this young man had hurt his father by asking for, by, by demanding, not asking, by demanding for what he received, as bad as he had hurt him, Okay, his dad was still there every single day watching and waiting and most importantly, hear this, expecting him to come home. He sees him out there. He is a long ways off and he's filled with, you know, his, uh, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming filled with love and compassion. Folks, hear this. Uh, memorize this he ran to his son embraced him and kissed him folks when we look when we look at that description filled with love with compassion and he didn't walk out there to him he didn't he didn't well you know maybe cowboy you know in cowboy we he, did, he didn't meander all right he didn't meander out there to him or he didn't whatever out there to him it says he ran to him he ran as fast and as hard as he could, and as soon as he got there, he wrapped him up, he embraced him, and he gave him a big old kiss on the cheek. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now, what we need to understand about that is Jesus is sharing this, as Jesus is teaching this. That is a picture today of Jesus to each and every one of us. You hear what I'm saying? That is a picture of Jesus to us. That is a picture of Jesus telling us that, man, hey, if you will just look for me, and if you will take a step towards me, I'm going to come to you. If you will take two steps for me, I'm, I'm going to come running to you. And when I get to you, I'm going to embrace you. I'm going to throw my arms around you. And I'm going to grab you up. And I'm going to hug you. And I'm going to love you. And I'm going to console you no matter what has gone on in your life. No matter what you have done, no matter how dirty you think you are, if you're in the muck, if you're in the mud, if you're in the cow crap, whatever you may be in, he's willing to come to us and wrap us up and give us a cleansing and give us a grace that only Jesus Christ can give. Folks, we've got to understand, and I, I want you, guys, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I want you, you, need, you need to right now, you need to tell Satan that he needs to shut up Okay, because you're not going to listen to him from this point forward. You're not going to listen to him anymore because all you want to hear, you want to hear what Jesus has to say to you right now. And what Jesus wants to tell you right now is, is that he loves you so much that he was willing to die for you. 
Everything else is irrelevant. You guys, check this out in, in John 3, 17. John 3, 17 says, because you see, guys, here's the thing with this. Here's the thing with this. So many times we think, we think that Jesus is here to condemn us. We think that Jesus, that, that Jesus came to, to judge us. Guys, when the reality of it is, you know, we know John 3, 16. John 3, 17 says God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. All right, did, 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 does everybody hear that? Did you catch that? It says God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. That's why Jesus came. He came so that he could save you. When we go back to our parable, what did the father do? The father grabbed up the servants. Man, go get him a robe. Can you imagine when he showed up, folks? He, he was in rags. You understand that? His clothes were tattered. His clothes were torn. His clothes stunk. They stunk. They were nasty. They were dirty. They were filthy. Go get him the finest robe. You go get him the best robe we've got in that house. You get him the best thing. You go get him, man, uh, you, you go, go, uh, go, go and, uh, man, I got to get back to it. Uh, go and, 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 and get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. He was filthy. He was nasty. He was covered in all this stuff, but yet his father wanted the best put on him. His father wanted him to have everything and then more. Luke 15, 10. No, before I read that, before I read that, before I read that, before I read that, here's the other part of this. Here's the other part of this. All right, because as I read this and as I look at this, when you get to the end of it, the father, the father, man, go kill the fattened calf that we've been, we've been feeding this sucker out. We've been saving it for a special occasion. We've been going to have a party. We've been going to have a celebration. You know, you've come home, go kill that fattened calf, and let's have a celebration. And then this account ends. This account ends there in verse 24. So the party began. How many of y'all like a good party? Everybody like a good party? Yeah. I mean, a, a good birthday party or something, ain't nothing wrong with that, is there? All right, well, we like to have that good time. We like to have a celebration. Man, I've seen cool in the gang here in a minute. Check this out. Check this out. You know, some of you younger ones don't. You get it, Corey, don't you, man? You, you're the ZZ top, cool in the gang kind of. You had long hair back then. I know, brother. I know. It's all good, man. Wait, like, you know, I'm telling you. That's what attracted you to him, wasn't it? It was the hair, wasn't it? Huh? No? Okay. All right. It's all right. Luke 15, 10. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out, Luke 15, 10. In the same way, in the same way, there is joy in the presence of, God, of God's angels when even one sinner repents. What does that tell us? Folks, that tells us that when, when, when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that tells us that there was a celebration in heaven that the angels rejoice, that, that, that there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. That tells us that there is a celebration that takes place when somebody repents and when somebody asks Jesus in their heart. That tells us that there is a party, okay? That there is a party that you're the guest of honor or the party is held in your name all because you asked Jesus into your heart and because Jesus saved you, because, because you repented. In essence, the party begins. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now, you know, we, 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 we live in this world, we live in this culture that we think we've got to have this or we've got to have that to have fun. We think we've got to, we've got to put this in our body to numb this. We've got to put this in our body in order for us to have a good time. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now, the best time you'll ever have in your life, the best time, the greatest moments you'll ever have in your life are the moments that we're, that we're, actively, uh, that, that, that we're actively, emotionally, physically involved in serving Jesus Christ. The moments that we're doing things for him, the moments that we are, we're in the midst of worshiping him, the moments that we're in the midst of communication with him, those are the best moments of our lives. Those are the best times that we will ever have. You don't need a Coors Light. You don't need a Bud Light. You don't need any marijuana. You don't need cocaine. You don't need heroin. You don't need to be whoring around, I promise you, because nothing can ever replace the feeling of serving Jesus and allowing Jesus to live through you. If you want a good time, if you want to truly have a good time, then folks, I'm going to tell you right now, hook up with Jesus. Because when you hook up with Jesus, okay, when you hook up with him, nothing else compares. Nothing else compares. Nothing else compares. My question for each of you this morning, 
Are you that younger son? Are you that younger son? Ladies, are you that younger daughter? Is that you who have demanded your inheritance now and have gone out there and squandered it? Is that what you've done? You know, have you squandered everything in your life? Have you been living your life like the prodigal son? Some of you have. Some of you have. All right? Some of you have. You know, guys, I, I, you know, I, I told you this is going to be different. We're going to be really real. We're going to be really real. You know, me and, I, 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 you know, and, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. I ain't going to look at nobody. You know, I, no, nobody has come and confessed this to me, but I'm going to tell you right now, in a room with this many men, there's somebody in here right now who's addicted to pornography. You're dabbling in it. You're messing around with it. You're looking at it, and it's destroying your life. It is. It's controlling you. Ladies, who may be the same thing. May be the same thing. Think, well, nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's just between, it's just between me. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, there is one person that knows, and guys, that's God, and that grieves him. That grieves him. But you have an opportunity today. Guys, there may the, the, ladies, one of you in here may be abusing, you may be abusing your husband. You may be abusing some drugs. Think, well, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Jesus knows. He knows. He knows. And he wants to deliver you from that today. He wants to give you freedom from that today. The question is, are you going to allow him to? Are you going to allow him to? Because, guys, let me tell you something. When he does that, he's going to clothe you in his finest robe. You understand that? He's going to place his seal on you. Okay? He's going to write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that name, your name is going to be written in his blood. And what is written and what is covered in his blood can never be washed away. Never. Are you living your life like the prodigal son? Or are you living your life for Jesus? He wants to wash you today. He wants to cleanse you today. He wants to restore you today. He wants, to, he wants you to come home today. And folks, he wants to throw a party today in your honor. Are you going to listen? Are you going to listen to that still small voice and allow him, and allow him to come into your heart, forgive you of your sin, and save you? It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how dirty you are. I've been pretty dirty in my life. I've been pretty dirty in my life, okay? I'm, I'm, there's times I'm still dirty, but praise God for the blood of Jesus. Praise God for the blood of Jesus. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're struggling with, guys, I'm going to tell you, it's nothing that Jesus can't take care of. Are you willing to give it to him? Cody, y'all come on up. I'm going to close this in a word of prayer. If that's you, if you're living your life like the prodigal son, guys, we're going to give you the opportunity to come home today. We're going to give you the opportunity to come and experience his grace, his joy, his love, his mercy, his forgiveness. Christian, hear me when I say this. Christian, hear me when I say this. There's a battle that's fixing to take place. Because you see, whoever that is, whoever that individual is that needs to hear that today, Satan's fixing to try to just plug their mind, plug their, plug their ears to where they can't hear what God's calling them to do. So, Christian, it's our duty that we go to battle on their behalf. It's our duty that we pray, that we fight that spiritual battle. You can't go, you can't go put no gloves on and duke it out. You can't pull your gun out and shoot him out or anything like that. That battle's only won through prayer. Only won through prayer, okay? So, Christian, I challenge you and I encourage you through this time right now pray pray for that one person for that one person that jesus wants to save today y'all stand with me father as we come to you right now lord once again i just man i thank you oh lord i pray i didn't mess this up father i thank you for saving a man a sinner like me God, there's still times that I get down on myself, Lord. There's still times that I struggle with stuff. Father, there's still times that, 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 God, I feel like, oh, my goodness gracious, I am not worthy. Lord, I know I'm not the only one with that. But, Father, you always remind me, in spite of all that, you still love me enough that you sent your son to die for me. 
Father, I lived my life like the, Lord, like the prodigal son. I lived my life just like him. Jesus, I thank you for being my father that welcomed me home. Father, if we're all honest here, many of us have lived our lives like that. And Father, there's some that are still living their lives like that. Lord, they're wandering around there, and Lord, they're squandering their talents, they're squandering everything, Lord, with the world. So Father, whoever that may be, God, if today is the day for salvation for them, Father, I pray very specifically, Lord, that you just, you, you, Lord, you kick, you kick the enemy out of here right now. Lord, you allow them to only hear you. Lord, you allow them to hear that your grace is sufficient. Lord, you allow them to only hear that you love them. Folks, if that's you, if today is the day of salvation for you, his word tells us that when we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that we shall be saved. And so I encourage you right now, if, if you're on rock bottom, if you've reached that point in your life where you know that it's time, it's time for me to quit trying to do it my way, and it's time for me to surrender. And I want to encourage you to pray this prayer right here with me. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Jesus, I know you died on that cross for my sins. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, I ask you to save me. Father, if they had the courage to be obedient to you and to call out to you right there, Father, you'll give them the courage they need, Lord, to tell somebody, to make it public, Lord, to confess it with their mouth that, that, that you are now their Lord and Savior. Father, I thank you for loving us. God, I thank you for loving me. Lord, I thank you for the low points in my life. And Father, I especially thank you for the high points. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. Father, we ask all this in your most precious and holy name. Amen. God bless you guys. Y'all have a great, great week this week, okay? Have a great week.